Ayara, the Shadow Queen, stands before us, imperious, ever youthful, and undying upon her balcony. Beautiful, regal, and effortlessly powerful, trimmed in gold and purple, drinking her red draft from elegant goblets fashioned in the Lockthwain style, perfectly sculpted for her slender fingers. She sips her crimson quaff and admires our work as we bleed our own creatures out so that she may gain power. She is ever youthful, ever powerful, and ever beautiful, for she is a elf noble. Wait, she's not a vampire? What the f- Welcome to the Uncommon Commander. My name is Ryan, and as always, I'll be your host today. For this video, we're going to be building a strange little deck idea that I got while building Alenda the Dusk Rose. Mono Black Flicker. Now there are only two legal cards that actually do flicker in Mono Black, the Artifacts, Voyager Staff, and Conjurer's Closet. With just two cards, the logical thing to say is that Mono Black can't do flicker. But you'd be wrong. I'm going to introduce you to an alternate version of Flicker that is less efficient than what's available in blue and white, involves significantly more hoops to jump through, and has half the payoff for doing so. If that sounds like it's up your alley, be sure not to miss a second of this video. Alright, we're going to be playing the Enters the Battlefield game, so we're going to want a commander that fits that mold. There were options available, but to my eye there were three commanders that stood out above the rest. I've included all three in this deck, so if you want to swap commanders out, give the deck a different feel, you can. The commander that I primarily built around, and the commander for this deck tech video, is Ayara, first of Lockthwain. The reason I chose her is because she does just about everything we need. She costs 3 mana, is a 2-3 elf noble, and has a triggered ability that says, whenever Ayara, first of Lockthwain, or another black creature enter the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses a life, and you gain one life. Passive ETB triggers are few and far between in black, and most of the ones that are out there are detrimental to us. Hers, though, is awesome for us. This is already very powerful for a mono black ETB deck, but then she also has another ability which is the real linchpin. It says, tap Ayara and sacrifice another black creature. Draw a card. Why is that such an important ability? Well, because black can't do normal flicker. The hoop it needs to jump through is having creatures die and this ability lets us kill a creature each turn for free, and then we draw a card for doing it. That's right, today we aren't doing normal old blue-white flicker, we're doing DEATH FLICKER! As a note, if you're the type of person that realizes that this is just instant speed reanimation, not a new thing called death flicker, and it's annoying you, then I want you to buckle in buddy, because I'll be calling it death flicker repeatedly for the next 10 minutes. By the way, today's deck is a focused casual deck that costs roughly $100 to build if you're buying it from TCG Player. And if you are, please consider using my affiliate links which can be found in the video's description. If you're looking for other ways to support me because I'm like the hapless adult son that you never had, you can do so by becoming a patron of mine at Patreon and get some benefits for it, like early access to deck lists and stuff. Finally, there's the free way of supporting me, clicking the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you! Before getting into it with Ramp, I would like to talk about our alternate commanders. These are Gonti, Lord of Luxury, and Torgar, Famine Incarnate. Ultimately, these two commanders have more powerful ETBs than Ayara does, but they lack the ability to both sacrifice and trigger from other ETB creatures, so I decided to include them in the 99 as the powerful ETBs that they are, but not as a commander. And actually, as I think about it, Torgar is kind of a sacrifice outlet himself, it's just that he requires a lump amount of creatures, while Ayara provides a more steady stream of sacrifices and value. And thanks to our Death Flicker cards, I think this deck runs best on a steady stream of select assassinations rather than mass carnage, at least most of the time. As usual, we are going to dedicate the early game to ramping. Ayara is a 3 mana card, so unless we have a turn 1 ramp spell that adds black mana, we're not going to be casting her before turn 3. Because of this I have tried to stick mostly to 2 mana ramp, and those include Arcane Signet, Charcoal Diamond, Guardian Idol, Mindstone, and Prismatic Lens. You could also lump Everflowing Chalice in here, as 2 mana will usually be its cost, but you can technically give it any even amount of mana in order to make it tap for more mana. 
To keep dollar costs down, we do have some three-mana ramp as well, in Altar of the Pantheon, Bonder's Ornament, Burnished Heart, Darksteel Ingot, and Heraldic Banner. The Altar is going to up our devotion to black, even though it's colorless. Bonder's Ornament is going to give us some expensive card draw that we hopefully won't need, but it's there in case of emergency. And Heraldic Banner is going to make our creatures even more powerful. You may have noticed that we're running a fair amount of ramp that gives us access to any color. Most of the time, these will simply tap for black. But sometimes they'll tap for our opponent's colors. I mentioned that we need to jump through the hoop named Death in order to make Flicker work in black, and these next cards are our methods to create that death. These are our Sacrifice Outlets, Culling the Weak, which is worth every single one of the $5 that it costs, Altar of Dementia, Dark Privilege, Soul Devi Adnate, Disciple of Bolas, and Shadowborn Demon, otherwise known as the guy that the six Shadowborn Apostles are supposed to be finding. Anyway, the first four of these cards are definitely our most consistent sacrifice outlets as they are free and repeatable. Disciple of Bolas only sacrifices one creature as an ETB ability, and Shadowborn Demon may not sacrifice any creatures if you've got six or more creatures in your graveyard already. If that's the case, then Shadowborn Demon is just a removal spell with a big old flying body on it. Now that our board is fully set up, we can start casting our ETBs. We'll begin with the token spells, Chittering Witch, Marsh Flitter, Sat's Will, Newscraft Mob, and Aberrant Overlord. Actually looking at it, I suppose I could have included Aberrant Overlord in the Sacrifice Outlet section. Oh well. With this section, I decided to run black creatures that make at least two or more black creatures on their own. You may also note that two of these spells are not creating tokens through ETBs. Sat's Will is just a great removal spell that can trigger Iara if you need the Grave Hate. And New Scraft Mob will make tokens, just not on ETB. It'll still work great with our Death Flicker cards, however, since it eventually just kills itself without the need for sacrifice outlets. A lot of our ETBs are mill cards. These are Stitcher's Supplier, Renegade Reaper, Carrion Grub, Mind Rack Demon, Returned Centaur, and Sewer Nemesis. Thanks to some of the other cards in this deck requiring that we have a decent sized graveyard in order to function right, you'll often want to target yourself with these. A couple of them, however, can still mill an opponent if you want them to have a graveyard too. Those are Return Centaur and Sewer Nemesis. Yet another group of ETB triggers are found on the creatures in our removal suite. This grouping of cards contains Feed the Swarm, Finale of Eternity, Entumor Exarch, Necrotic Plague, Boneclad Necromancer, and Shriekmaw, who conveniently sacrifices itself when evoked. We also have three board wipes here, all of which are ETBs. Those are Massacre Girl, Demon of Dark Schemes, who doubles as a decent reanimator, and Massacre Worm. The most consistent of these will be Massacre Girl, but the most fun will be the other two. Okay, you've waited long enough to find out how we're going to flicker our creatures. No more waiting for you. We'll begin with our one-off flicker spells. Kaya's Ghost Form, Malakir Rebirth, Supernatural Stamina, Abnormal Endurance, Demonic Gifts, Minions Return, Shades Form, and Unholy Indenture. We also have Kolfner's Urn, which is actually a one-off, but it requires that it holds three creatures before it finally breaks open for us. Those creatures also need to have at least four toughness in order to go into the urn in the first place. It's a more difficult card to get a reward from than the others are, but it yields a very nice windfall when you finally do get it to crack. Now that we've cast most of everything from our hand, we should look at refilling it. These cards are going to be Skull Clamp, Liliana's Standard Bearer, Midnight Reaper, Corpse Augur, Erebos Bleak Hearted, who additionally has a sacrifice outlet on him that can serve as creature removal for small creatures, Custody Lich, and Sanguimancy. We are also running the recursion spell, Sepulchral Primordial. It will require your opponents to have a graveyard, something you should be entirely capable of giving them. What a nice person you are. Oh, before I forget, we also have Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots in here. Good for protecting Ayara and giving her haste. Short section this. Our land base is super cool. It involves the colorless Ghost Quarter, Tectonic Edge, Buried Rune, Sequestered Stash, and the potentially colorful Myriad Landscape and Thespian Stage. It also includes the definitely colorful Castle Lockthwain, 
because Ayara needs her home with her at all times so she can decree things from its balconies, Cryptovaganim, Exotic Orchard, and Leech-Ridden Swamp. Finally, it includes our basic lands, 26 Mucky Yucky Swamps. And this brings us to the final segment of the deck tech, though not the final segment of the video. This is a segment in which I put my open hand in front of me and use it as a guide to count down the last five cards in the deck so I don't lose my place. This segment is affectionately named The Final Countdown! In today's Final Countdown, we're going to be looking at the cards that provide the biggest impact all at once. These are our swingiest spells. Is swingiest a word? At number 5, we have Decaying Soil, a card that doesn't actually look very swingy the first time you read it, but then you realize it basically says, sacrifice as many things as you can pay one mana each for, and get them all back in your hand to be recast again. At its worst, it will provide you with nothing. Usually, it'll provide you with constant value, and at its best, it's number 5 on this list. Since we're already talking about recursion, Let's also talk reanimation. Here at number 4 comes Belthor the Defiled. Because he's a creature, he can be recurred with Decaying Soil if we accidentally mill him. If we get him on the battlefield, he becomes a mass reanimator. There is a small degree of symmetry to his ability, but we're almost definitely going to get the most benefit from it. Remember our Death Flicker cards? There is a repeatable one that I left out, and it comes at number 3. Cauldron of Souls is its name, and Persist is its game. This thing will do lots of work if you've got multiple creatures with ETBs on the battlefield. We're not abusing it to the extent that some decks do, I'm looking at you Marchessa players, but it's a repeatable mass death flicker effect, and that's definitely worth 5 mana. At number 2, we have the one ETB creature that you're all yelling at me for forgetting. But I didn't forget, I just wanted to get your blood pressure up. Everyone, say hello to Gary. The Grey Merchant of Asphodel almost always does work in Mono Black, and with the ability to sacrifice and return him to the battlefield over and over, he'll swing the game in your favor if not win it outright. Oh, and he's got 4 toughness so he fits in Colfiner's urn. Bonus! And now we reach number 1. What oh what could be better than the Grey Merchant of Asphodel in a Mono Black Flicker deck? It's Nim Death Mantle. On its own, it's a repeatable Death Flicker, but it's not really on its own, is it? Heck no, baby. We're pairing this with Culling the Weak for infinite ETB triggers. There are some ways for you to lose once you get this combo onto the board, but there aren't many. And those ways almost all involve the ability Split Second. So congratulations. You just mono black Death Flickered your opponents out of the game. Go you. I do want to note some unreasonable upgrades for this deck here. There were several that I was either too cowardly or too poor to include. These are Deathmatch, Priest of Forgotten Gods, Thornbite Staff, and Lifeline. Deathmatch is awesome unless you're in a token heavy meta, in which case you'll lose that match. I am in a token heavy meta, so I'm pretty scared of it. Priest of Forgotten Gods is basically Ayara, but even more bloodthirsty, so that's pretty scary. Thornbite Staff turns Soldevi Adnate into Culling of the Week, and lets you abuse Ayara with very little setup, but it costs $10. And Lifeline really should be an auto-include if you have it lying around. Or if you want to buy a card that costs 50% as much as the rest of your deck. As we wrap up today, I'd like to remind you to hit that like button if you did like the video, and subscribe button if you'd like to see more like it. Now, news! I've gotten rid of that stupid thumbnail template I created. It lasted a grand total of two episodes, it was so bad, so I've tried refining my thumbnail skills. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the thumbnail for this one. If not, I'll try to press someone I know into service, maybe? I find people really respond to dictators. Another piece of news? Strixhaven is in spoiler season now, so I'll be doing some Strixhaven commanders in the near future. So if you're looking forward to that set, be sure to tune in here in addition to the much better channels that you follow. Until then, thanks for watching, and bye bye.